not take that for granted. It's a wonderful privilege. Again, I want to welcome each and every one that may be watching uh, live here and even those who may watch later by way of archive video. Uh, I want to uh, give a couple of announcements. Uh, this is very important and critical for our congregation, our church at this time. Communication will play a major role. Uh, we're not interested in just maintaining. Amen. We're interested in being overcomers. Amen. That when this thing is over, at least this particular phase of what God is doing in the earth, that we will be stronger. We would be wiser. We would be better. Greater. I'm so excited about that opportunity. It has been a common thing noted in history noted throughout many revivals it's even noted in this earth and this world today that when certain segments of Christianity fall under persecution it doesn't wipe out the church but it causes growth in it and so not that we are in persecution let me say that I'm not saying we are but when there is an attack or when there is adversity. Adversity should not cause the church of the living God to wither, but it actually causes us to be stronger. There's a fortification that takes place, a solidification, it's a firmness. It seems as though the church will hunker down and say, I shall not be moved. Trees planted by the waters. We shall not be moved. Our leaves shall blossom. Praise God. It's very important uh, that we uh, communicate what's transpiring, uh, our uh, schedule, if you will, and the things that we have set forth during uh, this time. If you are not a part of this church and you are watching, uh, please uh, bear with us as we spend a few minutes to go over uh, some minor logistics terms of what we're doing to continue on. Again, um, we will not have any gatherings in our church building at 212 East 25th Street until all restrictions or at least restrictions are lifted whereby we can do so. Uh, we are currently having small groups of 10 or less and again, I say currently, obviously things like that can change in a moment. So it's very important for everyone to stay tuned in um, and to uh, have the uh, proper communications open so you will be up to date with what's going on. We are trying to communicate to everyone uh, by means of uh, our mass email distribution uh, software, which is called Realm. It's our church um, software uh, management. And so we want to make sure that everyone receives information. So if you get an email through, uh, through um, Antioch North, please do not discard it. Take the time to read it. Um, everyone that we have email addresses on, we will send an email to update you as far as uh, what the uh, government, state government or uh, federal government, what they mandate in terms of uh, 
our ability to gather in what we can do. And so we are uh, also obviously streaming our church services, which are uh, through our uh, website, theantioch.com. Some of you are watching through uh, Facebook. Also, I want to mention that you do not have to watch us through Facebook alone. You can watch us through Facebook Live where you don't need a Facebook account. And so I don't know which way some of you are watching by different measures and different means. If you can get this information out to let people know who may have trouble uh, with uh, technology today, they may not necessarily be fully aware of how to maneuver and navigate uh, through some of the uh, platforms that are available. And so uh, we need each other during this time. Amen. So by way of announcement, I'm just going to make a, new, a few announcements again for our church. Um, some people have been interested in giving and uh, may not necessarily know um, how to do that. And so it's very important. We're going to make sure you have it on the screen uh, so you'll know how to, to give. And so uh, you can uh, give by texting. Uh, and you can give online. So given by texting, uh, what you do is text my Antioch. You can text the amount uh, to the number 73256. Again, you can text my Antioch, the words my Antioch, um, and then designate the amount. You can do that to the number 732. Five, six, and that's how you give by texting. You can also give online through our uh, online software. It's a little bit more involved in that, but if you want to give online, uh, there will be an information on the screen. You can go to on, uh, onrealm.org and backslash the Antioch slash give. We're going to leave that up for a minute so you can see that. And um, you will have to create a, an account to be able to do that, but you can do that. If you have any questions, if you need some help and some assistance in giving uh, online, you can contact uh, Sister N Nicole Sutton. That's N Sutton, N as in Nancy, N Sutton at myantioch.org, and she can help you to work through that. And you don't have to give online and text uh, text give just in this uh, situation, this current uh, crisis. You can also do that throughout, and uh, we encourage people to do that. It's very important to remain faithful to the kingdom of God. And uh, some uh, would like to think that uh, when certain things happen, our faithfulness to him with our finances uh, is not important. Amen. I, I would uh, say, I would dare to say, uh, this is part of our worship. Giving is always a part of worship. From the very beginning, in the book of Genesis, you'll note that both Cain and Abel gave of their possession and it was an act of worship Cain had brought to the Lord of a sheep I'm sorry of uh, Cain had brought of the Lord his grain and his fruit of the ground and Abel brought of the Lord his sheep that he was the keeper of the sheep they had to bring something to God it was a part of worship has always been a part of worship. Abraham, the father of faith, it was a part of worship to give to the Lord. And so we won't stop that part of our uh, faith in God because of a particular crisis. Amen. So we encourage you to do that. We also would like for you to stay connected to the body of Christ. We want you to stay connected to the church and so uh, again we do have a, a uh, way for you to stay connected uh, we have a, a our social media uh, we're putting out a lot of uh
have 15 minute uh, video clips to show. We'll be communicating uh, to, uh, to you by way of social media. And so uh, we, we want you to, to do that. If you're watching uh, this service through our website, we do want you to be aware of our social media uh, sites. And so uh, we have Instagram uh, that you can follow us on. Uh, Instagram at uh, Antioch underscore North. And we also have Facebook and Facebook Live, and that's fb.com uh, at uh, Antioch North. And so these are, are the ways that you can uh, follow us. We're going to have, we're going to do something different this evening. Uh, we're going to uh, give you an opportunity to find out a little more what we're doing and so at 6 p.m. I will have a video that will come out and uh, we're going to be talking to all of our uh, members you're part of the Antioch North Church family we encourage you to tune in at 6 p.m. it won't be a, a full service it would actually be a, a 15 minute at max a 15 minute video we'll give some instruction and Encourage families to pray together, use some scriptures that will be your your scripture reading. And so we're going to do that. And uh, praise God. So we're excited about that. And additionally, uh, last uh, two announcements. It's uh, prayer. I believe we're living in a day and a time where prayer is going to be critical. It's going to be urgent. So we're going to need you uh, to participate. Uh, with us in prayer and so if you have a prayer request whether you're a part of this church or you're just watching if you have any type of prayer request please we want you to uh, email this uh, email address at Antioch North at my Antioch dot com oh I'm sorry dot org once again that's Antioch North at my Antioch dot org so any prayer requests, you uh, please email that, that uh, email address. We'll pray for you. We'll contact you. We'll email you back, contact you, and uh, try to set up something where we can talk to you, pray for you on the phone or anything like that, see how things are going, and we will keep you on our prayer list uh, and, and, uh, as long as needed. Amen. Speaking of prayer lists, as long as needed, there is a 24-hour uh, prayer chain that we're going to be doing on March the 27th. So Friday, March the 27th, there will be a 24-hour prayer chain. It will begin at 6 a.m. on Friday morning, March the 27th. We're asking people to sign up for one hour of prayer. So some people have already signed up. Uh, again, this is a 24-hour prayer chain. We're going from Friday morning at 6 a.m. all the way through to Saturday morning at 6 a.m. We're asking you to sign up for at least one of those prayer slots. It's going to, there will be one-hour prayer slots. And so um, if you would like to participate, we need you to email Antioch North at myantioch.org. You will when you email, you'll email the hour that you'll pray. So you you maybe say seven o'clock. So you'll pray from seven seven a.m. to seven p.m. Please indicate a.m. or p.m. You pray at six p.m. It'll be from six p.m. to seven p.m. We just need you to simply email us. Email your 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 uh, your name, obviously. Uh, your email address won't necessarily have your name. And so email us your name and the hour that you'll pray for that 24-hour prayer period. Again, that's Friday, March the 27th, starting at 6 a.m. That will be the first prayer slot. And 6 a.m. on, the, on Friday, the uh, um, 28th, Saturday the 28th, will end that 24-hour prayer. We're asking you to pray and fast. So whatever type of fast you designate or you choose to do, uh, please do so. We're going to have fasting uh, that day. Amen. And I'm believing for a, a move of God. 
Amen. We're going to worship the Lord again. We're going to give you opportunity to give no matter where you are uh, and uh, what household or gathering you are in, small gathering. Um, it's, it's time to give. We're going to do that. The worshipers are going to come. We're going to sing a song, and um, it's, uh, we're going to do it this particular way. And so you'll have opportunity to give. If you have any questions, you can ask your small group leader at this time, and then we'll get into the word. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We appreciate you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, what a privilege we have. Hallelujah. Bow down. Bow down and worship. topic uh, the last two weeks I've preached on feed on the seed previously to that the message title was the good bad the wicked that was still part of this particular series, if you will. Um, I'm going to continue on that vein, 
And uh, if you have your Bibles and devices, you can turn to Luke chapter 8. We're going to be reading from the book of Luke chapter 8, the parable of the sword, beginning at verse number 5. You also find this parable in the book of Matthew as well, um, but we're going to be reading Luke's gospel. Amen. And so I'm going to kind of jump around here because there are some things we've already communicated, and uh, I will maybe reflect on a couple of points from previously and to bring us up to speed. And so, um, if you're watching this and you hadn't seen or listened to or heard the previous messages on uh, this Feed the Seed, I would encourage you to, to go back and maybe listen to those. I will say this, it's a prelude, many times when someone refers to these passages of scripture, this particular parable of the sower, both in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 13 and uh, in the book of Luke chapter 8, uh, many times people assume that this is referring to an unsaved person. And that this is when someone first receive the word of God for the first time. I don't believe this is a one-time event, a one-time occurrence. I don't believe it's when someone who was lost first uh, receives the gospel of God. As a matter of fact, when you read the passage of scripture, you will note that things happen over a duration or a period of time. I believe every time the word of God is sown, because the Bible likens the seed to the word. Jesus himself, in this parable, when he explained the parable, he, he gave us the, the meaning. He, he told his disciples what the meaning of the parable was, and he said the seed is the word. The seed is the word of God. And that's in Luke chapter 8 and verse number 11. The seed is the word of God. And so every time the word of God is sown, this parable can be referenced. Every time the word of God is planted, every time the word of God goes forth. It really doesn't matter how it goes forth. It doesn't matter how the word of God is obtained. It doesn't matter how the word of God is disseminated. It is applicable uh, to you. And so whenever you receive a track, if you will, whenever there's a word that goes forth from the pulpit or you read scripture yourself at home, with wherever, whenever, the word of God comes into your life. This parable uh, is relative to you and I. And so it, regardless of who you are, regardless of your religious background, as I said before in a previous message, the seed is indiscriminate. It, it, it doesn't discriminate. The seed doesn't choose and pick. Uh, it, it just goes forth and anywhere, any way, no matter what the ground looks like, no matter where your life is, when the word of God goes forth, it really doesn't care what type of ground it goes on. Amen. And so that's how we can frame uh, this passage of Scripture and so we can understand it's for everyone. Verse number 5 in Luke chapter 8, a sower went out to sow his seed. The sower is Jesus Christ. The sower is God. And he sowed some 
which fell by the wayside and it was trodden down. We talked about that last week. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell among or upon a rock. We're going to spend some time talking about this this morning. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Some fell among or on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit. And so here we talked about uh, the seed that fell by the wayside. Amen. Uh, I didn't have to say sit down, so hopefully you're in your uh, places of uh, gathering and you have already sat down. And, and those who are leading you have, uh, I guess, led you that way. But uh, last uh, week we talked about the, the seed that fell by the wayside. And we, 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 we like it because the scripture like it. And it says uh, in verse number uh, five that it was trodden down. The wayside was trodden down. And, and some seed fell uh, by the wayside and it was trodden down. And that word trodden down means to be trampled on. And it, it speaks of, uh, as we mentioned last week, of a hardened ground, a ground that's hard. Notice who what hardens the ground? It, uh, it was someone that walked on the ground. It was man-made. The reason why the ground was hard was, was because it was man-made. It, it, it was trodden down because men stepped on it and walked on it. And I, I, again, we likened that if you had uh, some grass that, that people began to walk on, you had a, 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 uh, an area of land, if people, enough people walk on it, it would become a hard surface. It would become a pathway. This this particular uh, ground was a pathway. It was it was maybe on the edge of of a a a, a, um, a highway or whatever. And so maybe it was a field that was close to the the edge of where people walked. And people don't always walk on the on 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 the right places. And so they walked a little bit on on the the field. That was to receive seed, and and that area got hard. It it, it was so hard that the, the the seed would fall on it, and it would bounce. And and then the fowls of the air would see seed, and because it wasn't embedded in the ground, the fowls of the air would come and eat the seed. Amen. And so uh, that's the seed that fell by. The wayside, and we all have wayside seed. We have, all have areas in our lives that where people have tread upon and have trodden down, and people have done things to make us hard. People, people have done things in our life to cause us to put up shields and to put up walls and to put up defenses because we don't want to be hurt. We don't want to be offended. And, and so we, we need to understand though, when we put up these walls and these uh, uh, the defenses, it puts up a defense towards the word of God. You can't shield people out without shielding out the word of God. And so the, it makes us hard in our heart. And the problem is when people make us hard, amen, we get hardened to what God is also trying to do. You can't have one without the other. You can't be pliable to God and hard towards your people or towards people. That's why the commandments is love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's not a one-way thing. It's not just vertical. Some people are under the opinion that they can love God with everything that they have and hate their neighbor. They can love God and treat people any kind of way. I'm sorry it doesn't work that way. And so when you treat people a certain way, it is indicative of your relationship with God. And I'm here to say you can't really love God and, and, and hate people. You may think you love God, but you can't. It's an impossibility. Amen. Because he loves people. And if I love God, amen, I'm going to love the things that God loves. 
When I truly have the right type of love with God, towards God, I'm going to love what he love and hate what he hate. And so that's by the wayside, but I'm not here this morning addressing seed by the wayside. Please go back and listen to the last message that's uh, feed the seed too. And you can listen to that and, and hear about seed by the wayside. Now, hopefully, I'm under the impression that everyone cares about the word being sown in their heart. I care about the word. I don't want the word bouncing all off of me. I don't want, I, I go and I hear the word, I hear a scripture that's quoted, a scripture that, now I, I, I get it. I know sometimes people quote scripture and they don't have a clue what it's talking about. They don't have a clue what the word of God is and how it applies and everything else. I tell you, people quoting scripture left and right and, and, and religious, uh, from all religious circles, we need to stop worrying about the, the sower. The Word of God is the Word of God. Now, now I'm not getting into doctrine and dogma and, and, and teaching now. I don't have to receive that. But someone read the Scripture, I might as well take that Scripture. It doesn't matter whether the, seed, the sower knows what the, the seed and the power of the seed. It really doesn't matter. I heard, I heard somebody once say, I think it was Brother Davis, he said, hey, the sun really doesn't know it's the sun. Amen. The rain really doesn't know it's the rain. And the seed doesn't know it's the seed. And the ground doesn't know it's the ground. The sower that goes forth may not understand everything about it. But when everything coincides and do what it needs to do, something happens. And so it doesn't matter where it's coming from. It doesn't matter who has the knowledge of the seed. What matters is that I receive the word of God and that my heart is ready to receive the word of God. Too many people make so many excuses about why they're not going to receive the word of God and they claim that they're not going to receive it because of a certain person and because of, of a particular group of people and maybe it's because of this church and maybe because of that church. Hey, you need to find a church that's preaching truth. I understand that. Now doctrine is important. But the seed is the seed. And I need to be in a place where I, whatever, whenever the, the, the scripture is read, the word is given and I, I take that word and I receive it. And so that was when I can't receive a word, you know, some people, someone to come around, I, and I have that as a, a preacher, a, a pastor, sometimes a person come and, and they, 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 you know, they tell me to give me a word or whatever, and, and, and I have to be careful because I look at the person that gives it. And so now, I, you know, I just kind of say, okay, I'll just take it. If it's from God, it's from God. If it's not, it's not. And I, I, I can't worry about all that. But if it's Scripture, I need to take it. But our hearts become hard. Because it's been trodden down by men. Again, notice that it's men that trodden this uh, ground. And that it, this particular type of ground uh, is reflective of the fact that man did something. Now, when you look further, and it talks about some fell upon a rock. In Luke chapter uh, 8 verses number, verse number 6. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. In other words, the devil didn't take it away this time. But it, it landed upon a rock, not hardness of heart, but that was a, a hard object in the way. The heart wasn't hard. See, the trodden ground, the heart was hard. Here, it wasn't that the heart was hard, but it had hard places in it. There were objects in the ground that made it hard, and those areas where the uh, rock was, the seed couldn't grow. So maybe there's areas in your life where the, the seed fall on the right type of ground, but if you have rocks all over the place, there are areas in your life that has holes because the word can't go forth in your heart. 
And we must be careful because when we receive the word from God, a word of God, and, and, and because we have errors in our heart that is, is right for seed, we, we say that's enough. But I don't want stony places on my field. Now, for those who really care about their lawn, they hate uh, bald spots and brown spots and patches and everything else where the ground they, they doesn't grow properly. I'm telling you, when you have that, you don't even look at the green parts. You look at that part that's messed up. It bothers you. When I, when I go out to my lawn and there's a spot that's, that, that, that's not right, that has something or whatever, I don't even focus on all the stuff that's right. I focus on, on what's not right. Because I realize, hey, there's some potential there. And, and while, hey, it's good that grass is growing in one spot, hey, there's some spots that, 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 that needs some tending to. And, and I'm not satisfied, and I need to, to do whatever is possible to take care of that area. Can I ask you this morning to stop focusing on what's right in your life and be begin to look at the areas where God's Word can't go forth and produce fr uh, fruit? Amen. Uh, I, in, in the midst of doing everything this morning, it's, it's amazing that we had everything. It was, it's not a lot of people in here. It's, it's, we, we, we made sure we stayed under the number, and so we have uh, seven people in the building. The problem is uh, I don't have any water. <laughs> and I told myself I was going get to get, go get my bottle of water, but I stayed in the sanctuary up until the uh, time of service. And so... Uh, now I'm, my mouth is, I got dry mouth, and so I, I'm like, I'm ready to go get a drink, and, and there's none here. Amen. Uh, so anyway, moving along. So you're, if you're in somebody's house, you got water you can drink. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just teasing, just kidding. I'm sure the few people that are here are, are running. It's like uh, uh, David and his men. David talked about being thirsty and war. Somebody broke through the garrison, broke through the fort, got some water and everything else, and then David poured it out. <laughs> I still, I still hadn't gotten that scripture yet. I still gotta, I gotta figure that thing out. Uh, but anyway, moving on along, and and uh, I, I am concerned, deeply concerned. Uh, sometimes when when we applaud ourselves and pat ourselves on the back. Uh, to those areas in our lives where there's plus green grass. And I can go in my lawn, and to be quite honest, my, I, I, it, it, sometimes it's not the lawn. Sometimes it's what's underneath. And it, it's, it's, it's funny how I can go out to my lawn, and, and this it, grass is growing or whatever, and then uh, after a while you get some erosion, some rain and everything else. And the next thing I go to my lawn, because I do the cutting of the lawn other than when my son-in-law is not cutting it. And God bless him. God really bless him. Amen. Especially bless him this, this spring. Amen. We're going to need that. Hallelujah. And, and so I'll come out, and then there's a, a, a rock in a place. And I know I didn't see a rock before. And so sometimes when there's a lot of not a lot of soil and, and things transpire on my lawn, amen, where, where there's maybe some erosion and rain, this, that, and the other, I look, and then there's a rock. Or if I go out and dig, and sometimes I had to overturn uh, ground or, or, you know, lay down uh, uh, what you call, um, what you call the stuff? Uh, man, I can't, mulch, mulch. And then I, I, I'll uh, discover a rock. And it's like, I didn't know that. And sometimes big ones that you didn't even know was there. And so this is not trodden down ground. Thank God for where I live, there are not people walking all over my lawn. And so my lawn is not messed up because it's, it's hard ground because people have trodden down. It's not a pathway where people walk. I have a path on the side of my house, and, but I'm glad I don't have a path right there at, in the front of my house. And so... Uh, thank you very much. We're advertising Deer Park. <laughs> that was an inside joke. And so, um, on my lawn, though, in, in, in some places, I, I uncover a, a big, gigantic rock. Now, I will tell you, before that rock came up to the surface, what I thought was grass wasn't really grass, 
the beginning, and in the beginning, it was some sort of weed. And so, uh, but where that rock is, uh, grass won't grow in that area, that spot. Weeds will grow around. Amen. But rocks won't grow. I'm sorry, uh, uh, grass won't grow. Vegetation, the proper vegetation won't grow because of the rocks. And there are, Jesus was saying, there are areas in our lives that stony places. Stony places. And God was saying sometimes when the word is sown, when I have stony places, now my whole heart is not hardened. And so we can say, okay, my whole heart is not hard. But maybe there are stony places that God is trying to deal with. And we've grown accustomed with these places. So we say, hey, as long as I have some grass and as long as I have some vegetation and this, that, and the other and some flowers growing, I'm fine. But what if God decides that, hey, that part of your heart belongs to me also, and I don't want a stone there getting in the way. If you look at the book of Matthew, if you will, in chapter 13, uh, uh, there the same parable is uh, mentioned. And uh, Matthew says it this way in, in 13, verse number 4. And when he had sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And we talked about that in verse number 5. Some fell upon stony places. Luke says, fell upon a rock. Matthew says, some fell upon stony places, indicating it wasn't just one rock, amen, in, 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 uh, in the field. Now, I can get away a problem with one rock. I can settle because nobody's perfect. Nothing's perfect. My heart will, will never be perfect. But Matthew indicated, hey, there were some stony places. And he goes on to say, where they had not much earth, in other words, where stony, when there are stones, you don't have a lot of earth, a lot of dirt, a lot of moisture, a lot of place where you can have growth. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want to grow. And the only way I'm going to grow is that God has to uh, take uh, uh, occupancy in more areas of my life and therefore, many more areas of my heart. If I can just give God full access to my heart. He, does he love the Lord thy God with all thy, thy heart. All thy heart. That means if I have any areas where there are stones, that hinders my relationship with God. Again, take note that uh, this, the, the wayside ground was because people trod on it. I believe here is not people unless someone is throwing rocks on, uh, in your field. Now, that may be the case. And, and so some of these uh, stony places are because maybe somebody picked up a rock and threw it in your field. I, you know, I know uh, I, I used to be a rock thrower when I was a child. <laughs> I would throw rocks, and, and, and my, me, my cousin and I, we would get... You, you got, y'all don't do this, young kids don't do this anymore, thank God. We would make our own sling slot, sh you know, slingshots. I was a little David back then in the day. Amen. We would get a little hanger, get rubber bands, get a patch, sew that patch together, and we would make slingshots. Now, it wasn't the type of slings that they used to have in the Bible days. And in the Bible days, David, he had a thing that he would hurl. And they would... And, and hurl rocks. And I can imagine David had to practice. He wasn't that, hey, let me tell you, he was good when he hit uh, Goliath with a stone. It wasn't some wish. It wasn't some close my eyes and I hopefully hit it. He was skilled at it. And so I was like that. I was skilled at slinging stones. I remember we used to practice slinging stones at cars going by on the road. And and so we would hide behind the woods, and my cousin and I, we would sling and, 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 and uh, shoot a gun. I know that's bad. I'm not advertising that. If you have your children watching, close their ears, tell them that was a bad thing. Hey, that was when I had a whole lot of rocks in my life. I had some hard errors in my heart. I wasn't right. Hey, Amen. Don't throw no stones. But some of us, we're still stone throwers as, as we've grown up. 
Some of us are still throwing stones. We may not have a slingshot, but we still throw stones. And I'm telling you, there will be people in your life that will throw stones at you. Amen. There will be people in your life that will put stones in your field. And you got to be able to say, hey, I, I'm not going to go attack them. I'm going to get the stones out of my field. It's incumbent upon you to take care of your land. It's incumbent upon you to take care of your heart. No one can do it for you. Now, they will trotten on it. Hey, they will harden it. Hey, they will throw stones on it, but it's up to you to get the stones out. It's up to you to allow your heart to be uh, fertilized, and it's up to you to allow, allow your heart to be cultivated and, and, and to allow it to, to be plowed upon. So when the seed of God goes forth, it goes forth on the good ground. It is our responsibility. The sower's responsibility is just to sow the seed. The sower may not have even owned the field. He was only responsible. He was hired for sowing seed, and then he would go about his business. But the person that owned the field, he had a responsibility to get that seed, the ground right for the seed. If he didn't get the ground right, it wasn't the sower's fault. The sower was going to get paid no matter what the ground looked like. And it's our responsibility to make sure the ground of our heart is right. Amen. And so there are stones. I can imagine you have stones in your field. It's probably not a whole lot of stones that were attributed to someone throwing stones in your field. You know, all, 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 the, all the wood that, that's in your field is not because of woodchuck wood. <laughs> Y'all get that lady woodchuck. Stop chucking wood. <laughs> you woodchuckers. So all the stones that are in your heart is not because somebody threw stones. Sometimes, many times, we have stones just because of life. A lot of times it's because of situations. Watch this. When Jesus uh, revealed this parable, he, he said some fell upon, upon stones or stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. It wasn't, the earth wasn't deep. Now watch when Jesus gave the explanation to this. He said in verse number 20, uh, Matthew uh, 13 and 20, we'll look at Luke in a second. He said, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word of God. You receive the word of God. Here we go. Now, this is what it says. Uh, and you receive, you hear the word of God, and anon with joy, you receive it. You, it, it fell in your heart, and you're happy about it. You come to church on a Sunday morning, or you're streaming at home on a Sunday morning, and you hear the word, and you receive it with joy. Hey, if you didn't receive the word with joy, you're getting all bent out of shape as something I said. You don't even have stony ground. You have hard ground. See, the stony ground is a person that even, that, that field, that whole field isn't messed up. And that's why some people can't receive the word of God at all. It's because their whole field is hard. But some people, your whole field isn't hard. This is a, a stony ground. You have areas in your field that will receive the word. Now, here we go. And you receive it with joy. Verse number 21. Yet, even though you receive it with joy, you say, hey, oh, praise God. You, you go out with a high hand and uh, uh, something is going to be different. It's, here we go. Yet. Have he not root within himself, but dureth for a while? I mean, you last for a while, maybe a couple of days. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Notice that when persecution arises because of of the word, not because of what someone else did. 
not because of what someone else has done. Now in Luke chapter 8, let's go back to Luke, and we're going to read that same uh, scenario, verse number 13. They on the rock, that's 8 and 13, they on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. Very similar to Matthew's version. And these have no root, which for a while believe. That word was good, and I'm applying it. And in time of temptation, fall away. Now, Matthew told us what that temptation was. And uh, Luke just said it's temptation. Matthew said, and it's not talking about lust and all. It's the temptation, meaning the testing. Luke uh, tells us like that. But Matthew tells us it's because of the word. When the word is sown in our heart, but the Bible tells us when the word of God comes, the word of God will try us. Amen. And so there's a testing just because of the word of God. And the Bible says they are a Offended by and by, or time of temptation, they fall away. And so they are tempted and they are troubled and they are offended because of the word. In other words, when the word of God is sown in your heart and there are stony places, the word can't grow and you you will get offended at that word that was sown. So now it's not because of anybody else. It's not because of people trotting down and and making you mad and making you offended. You get offended because of the word. Jesus said it this way. John the Baptist, he was out, we know, in the wilderness. Feeding off of locusts and wild honey and girded about the loins with a leather leather girding. <laughs> and he he uh, was preaching and he was proclaiming the kingdom of God and everybody came to hear John. He was the man. He challenged Herod. It wasn't Herod the Great, but his son. He, he challenged uh, uh, everything that, that was around. He challenged the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. And, 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 and people said, hey, man, this is a prophet. He said, hey, who, 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 you know, we, we're going to come and we, we're going to get baptized. And, and he proclaimed Jesus Christ and he's the son of God. He's the lamb of God. He's going to take away the sins. We know all that. Hey, follow him. Don't follow me. I must decrease. He must increase. Oh, yes. But then he got offended by and by. Sooner or later, he's in prison, and because of the word, he was in prison. So this is talking, you know, I'm telling you what, if you're going to live live for God, things are going to come in your life because you're trying to live for the word and you're trying to do what's right. You're trying to abide by the word of God. You're trying to get your life right. And amen, things start start uh, happening in your life that seems to go contrary. And then you get offended because you have to make a decision. Hey, get that that um that rock out, get those stony areas out. In other words, you got to do something. You got to move and you don't want to touch certain areas in your life. Where the word is not growing, and you get offended at the word because you don't want to touch certain areas in your life. And something has to go. And we choose to uh, say, hey, the word of God is not going to go here. And we get offended at the word because the word will bring you to a place that you must do something. Remove the stones. Nothing won't grow. So John the Baptist is in prison. Hey, this wasn't the script. 
This wasn't how the story supposed to, supposed, to, supposed to have gone. And we say that many times in our life. Hey, I didn't expect this. When I came to God, uh, I thought it all was going to be peachy and rosy. Uh, hey, I thought I was going to be smelling roses. I thought the sun would always shine. Uh, I thought my bank account would always be full. Hey, I thought everybody would treat me right. Uh, I thought I would get new jobs and new homes and houses and lands and cars and everything else. Uh, hey, I thought I would live on easy street. Uh, hey, I didn't know I would have it rough. Uh, I didn't know I would have to climb some high mountains. Uh, I didn't know I would have difficulties. I wouldn't know I would go through struggles and be like John the Baptist, decreased. And so John the Baptist, he because of his life and the things that happened in his life, he asked some of the same boys, he said, go to Jesus and say, is he the one or should we look for another? Before, he was saying he's the son of God. He's a lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Follow him. Now he's saying, hey, I want to know, are you really the guy that we're supposed to have been looking for? Hey, do we follow you or should we follow somebody else? And unfortunately, there are many people that had hard errors in their life and, and, and stones in their life. They start off well. I've seen so many people come into this church building and, and receive the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. I've seen people go down in the water in Jesus' name and have told me this is the best day of their life and things will never be the same. I've seen people that walk out of here with so much joy and then after a while, because of temptation, because of the word, because because God is challenging them to go deeper, to remove some things out of their life, and things are contrary to the word. They get offended at the word by and by. But because God has allowed things to come in their life, it wasn't a person, per se, that threw the, 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 the rock. Again, there are a lot of rocks in my lawn. It wasn't that somebody came along and threw the rocks. Those rocks been there. Those rocks been there. It, it's like God, uh, uh, and when he created the earth, uh, when he created the world, and he put some rocks down in the ground. And so we get offended a lot of times with God. We don't say we're offended with God. We get bent out of shape when things come about in our life like John that we didn't expect. Uh, hey, I didn't expect to be laid off. Hey, I didn't expect to lose my car. I didn't expect to be in an accident. Hey, I didn't expect this in my life and that in my life. And, and now I'm bent out of shape. Uh, now I'm messed up. Uh, now I don't know what to do. Uh, hey, I trusted in this church and, and this church let me down. Hey, hey, I trusted in my parents and they let me down and now I'm offended by and by. And so God is saying, hey, there are areas you must identify with in your life. Hey, there are stones, and, and, and maybe it's not man that put those stones there. Maybe God kind of uh, strategically placed a stone right here and a stone right there. And, and sometimes you don't even notice the stones, and, and it takes time and erosion and different things to take place. And all of a sudden, you see this big stone in your lawn. Sometimes, some years ago, I can cut my grass. I'm like, man, this big thing, what is this thing? And I have to go take it and toss it out. And so, I believe this passage of Scripture is indicating that sometimes, I, I, you know, life isn't fair. You have so many people that say life isn't fair. What a revelation. Life is not, you might as well settle it right now. I, can I tell somebody, you might as well settle it right now. Life, I didn't say anything about God. See, some of you will say, God is a fair. Why is God treating me this way? Why did God allow this to come out of life? Why did this person have that? Why did this person have that? Why I can't? Things always happen good to others and bad to me. You blame God. You get offended towards God. And John the Baptist was offended towards the way Jesus dealt with his life. Hey, 
hey, I'm out there preaching the gospel. I'm out there declaring your name. I'm out there preparing a way for you to come. Why would this happen in my life? Hey, I'm the man that's bringing about the New Testament. I'm the way the man that's bringing about the way of the Lord. I don't deserve this. If anybody didn't, didn't deserve to be beheaded, it would be John the Baptist. Why am I in prison? I'm doing the will of God and the work of God. I've sacrificed my life. All I got is wild honey and locusts. Come on, give me a break. And John, John the Baptist, he did all that. And Jesus, he didn't say, oh, John, I'm so sorry. He didn't call angels to loose to uh, let John out of prison. You know, a lot of times we messed up. We, we, we get mad at Jesus and, and have our little shouting, mouth, shouting match and, and a pouting time with Jesus and everything else. We try to look to see what he's going to do. You know how when you, you kind of shout somebody, you kind of bark at somebody, and you hope they don't respond? You know what I mean? You, you, see, you see some little guy, he, he lashing out at some big dude, and he's like, please, please, don't, don't, don't respond. I, I hope he doesn't help. He doesn't. And, and, and John the Baptist, he, he kind of just lashed out. Now, G, Jesus kind of, he came back. He didn't come back with some, you know, sweet answer. He said, John, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, my bad, John. I forgot you the man. If it wasn't for you, John, I wouldn't be where I am. No, he just said, hey, go, go tell John this. See, tell, tell John this. The blind, they see. Deaf, they hear. Tell them that dead people are being raised. Tell them sick people, guess what? They're being healed. Tell them all that. John really knew all that. So that was kind of a prelude. You know, he was trying to, he trying to come in the, 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 you know, the back doorway. Tell them all that first and then tell them, blessed is he who is not offended in me. <laughs> he didn't give them the answer straight away. He wasn't talking about all this other stuff. See, you want to look at all that other stuff, John? He said, hey, I'm going to tell you, you, you like people being healed? Oh, hallelujah. You like, the, you like the lame walking? Hey, you like the deer, You like the deaf being able to hear? Hey, you like all those things? Oh, yeah, whoop de do. Won't you tell John this also, like this? Blessed is he who's not offended in me. One, one, uh, Version says, blessed is he who is not offended in the way I run their life. In other words, whatever God allows, whatever uh, uh, rocks and stony play, all you just remove the rocks. And so he, had, he was offended by and by. He tripped up over the rocks. See, that word offended means to trip over. To be tripped up. You know, I hate when I walk, and, and you know, you're trying to walk cool. And in Baltimore City, you got to walk cool. You may not have to do that in Anne Arundel County, in Hoffa County, and all that. Y'all don't know nothing about that if you live a, or somewhere else. Maybe somebody's wa watching from Texas and all that. I don't know, out in the boondocks and all that. And I don't know where you may be watching it from. They, uh, you know, and when you walk in Baltimore, you got to walk like you, you know, you, you know. Hey, you got to walk, you know, I see, I, it doesn't matter how old you are. I see, I, I'm right, riding down the road, I know this guy, and he's about 65, and this guy, he, he's stepping, you know, you got them old timers, you know, they got a certain step about them, and you got the young guys, you know, I don't know about those guys, because you can't really tell how they walk, because everybody's walking like a penguin because of their pants. But you got to have some type of walk, you, you know, you, it's just the way it is, you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness, how did I get off on this? And, 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 and so, uh, how did I get off on this? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I got off on this. Help me, Lord. I'm being streamed. Help me. And, and so, uh, you, 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 you care about how you're walking and, 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 uh, and, and, and you know, so, it, yeah. Uh, anyways, thank you very much. And, and thank God there's at least one person here. So, if I was here by myself, it, I wouldn't have been able to figure it out. Amen. We need at least 10, so 
And so you're walking down the road, and, and, and all of a sudden you, you're trying to walk cool, and then, you know, it's a big rock or something. You, you trip over it or whatever. And, and that's what that's like, you know. You, get, you trip over a rock. Now, if I'm out there in my lawn and all that, I don't trip over grass. If I trip over grass, I, I, I need some, some lessons in learning how to walk. But, but sometimes I got these rocks, and I got these big stones I put in my, in my, my lawn. And I cut around, you know, you try to, you're, you're walking path, you know, try to create a certain scenario or whatever. But I can trip over the rock. Now, I can keep tripping over the rock or I can just remove the rock. Now, some of us, we keep tripping because of the rock when all we have to do is remove the rock. The problem is we oftentimes remove the, the wrong rock. And that's Jesus. And I got certain rocks that I got there for, like, uh, they're stepping stones. And I put those things out so I can step on it. And you know why I do that? So I don't step all on my lawn and create a hard place. And so in order to, to, to step out on my lawn, uh, I got to have that walkway, which is a rock. And see, we need that in our life, but some of us will remove the rock. The wrong rock, but you need to go and, and search your heart. The Bible says this. Search my heart. And find out. See if there's any wicked way in me. And a lot of times we, we want to look at other people, what's going on in someone else's life, and don't spend a whole lot of time examining the rock. You know, why do I get bent out of shape sometimes? Why, why do I start to point my finger at God and blame God or question God? Have you ever questioned why did this happen in your life? And you're really directing it towards God. You don't say you are, but you're like, you know, you're kind of questioning God. You're really saying, God, do you really know what you're doing? Sometimes we will slack in a certain area in our life. Because we come against a rock. Sometimes we, we struggle in our life because God is trying to get us to acknowledge that there are certain areas that he's trying to produce some fruit in. And there's something that's hindering. And then we get upset. We get angry. We get frustrated. With God. Again, life isn't fair, but God is just. He's a just God. And um, I know a lot of times we want to, we want God to be uh, what we would call a socialist. And that's to distribute everything evenly. Now, in a socialistic government, is you take away, take from the rich. If you have, a, if you earned all this, worked hard, sweat and brow, the socialist government, they say, well, I'm taking some of it away, and I'm going to give it to somebody else, no matter how hard you work for it. So I'm going to take it. So somebody worked 15 hours, or say somebody worked 20 hours, and then you had somebody else that didn't work an hour. And you take away the money from somebody who worked 20 hours and say, I'm, I, I got to give it to somebody who didn't even decide to work for it. That's socialistic. And our, our, God, our God is not like that. Our God is not like that. Now, my wife and I, we know we try to treat our children justly. Our, uh, mainly uh, our three uh, three girls, we, what we do is we would, and even to this date, if she gets gets something like for Christmas, we'll buy three of the same thing. You know, but each of them are different. So we kind of tailor it to them. Hello. Uh, the way you deal with every child is different. You treat them all uh, justly. And fairly, but you kind of deal with them differently based on who they are. One thing 
if I gave one child one thing, they would look at it like I'm crazy. What is this? But the other one would say, wow. And that same person said, wow, if I gave them something else, they would go, oh. And the other one would say, hey, that's nice because they're different. God knows exactly what each and every, every one of us need in our life, whether good, bad, or ugly. Amen. He knows exactly the trial that you need in your life. He knows, amen, what to put in your life. Amen. He knows what to bless you with. Amen. He knows all these things. And, and then God weighs everything in the balance to see your attitude, to see your disposition. And, and, and when the word of God goes forth, when the word of God is, is trying to do something in your life and he's trying to work something in your life and he's trying to get, get you to, to do something, he, he, he's trying to see are you willing to uh, remove areas, uh, stones in your life where he's trying to put his good seed, his good word in. Now, seed doesn't care, again, where it's thrown. And we can allow seed to be sown in our hearts, but we have to be responsible for feeding the seed. And I can't feed seed where there are stony places. I have to remove the stones in order to begin to feed the seed that was planted. I have to take time going into the field and to search my heart. I've come from a place where I've allowed and learned to uh, learn to have God to remove the fallow areas in my heart. It, the Bible talks about breaking up the fallow ground. And we can allow God to break up the fallow ground, the hardness. And the, that, that, that comes from repentance. And that comes from conviction. That comes from, from change and, and allowing God to, 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 uh, to turn us around. And, and, and when, I, when I'm hard, I come to God hard. And, and, and sometimes life deals me hard blows and people or whatever. And, and I got to allow that hardness in, in my, life, my life and in my heart to be broken up. I got to allow uh, the, 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 the word and, and, and the preacher and whatever it takes place to, to break up the foul of ground. And I got to allow the, 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 the worker of the field to break up the hard areas in my life. But sometimes you break up those hard areas. And underneath, you'll find stones. So it's not good enough just to break up the hardness like some of you did last week. You came up here and you, you, you repented of some things. You confessed some things. You talked about some hard errors because people offended you. But now you have to go a little deeper. Maybe there are some things that have transpired in your life. Maybe... God has planted those things there and maybe you're offended with God and maybe you're offended with life circumstances and, and, and the seed will get sown and then you wonder why it doesn't last. I, I've seen people come and they, 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 they do well for a while and then they don't last. They, they go back to doing other things and they wonder why. They think, well, I'm struggling with sin and I'm, I'm struggling with really wanting to live for God. No, I'm telling you right now. There's a fight between you and God because he's trying to get you to remove some things in your life where his word can't produce the fruit that it needs to produce. And so these areas start off fine and then it withers away. There's no more growth. And pretty soon you stop taking care of the rest of the field. And so once you stop taking care of some of the field and walk away, you leave the rest of it alone. And next thing you know, it looks like a barren land, a wasteland, a ruined land. I can recall going to some places where I've seen the grass grow and look so pretty and beautiful. Then I come back years later, and it's just messed up, neglected. And all it takes to have 
a field where the proper stuff doesn't grow is neglect. And so this morning, if we're going to feed the seed in our hearts, the next area of helping our heart is to look at those stony places, those places where we may have gotten offended towards God because of things in our life. And won't we look at those things all over if you are watching Maybe, regardless of whether you're watching online, live now, or streaming later, or, or, or I'm sorry, watching the video later. Right now, under the sound of my voice, won't you begin to allow God to search your heart. Search me, O oh Lord. Try me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Come on, lean not upon your own understanding. Come on, why don't we begin to seek the Lord right now? And if, if, there, if there are things in your life where you, 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 you like a roller coaster up and down in your walk with God, maybe you're stumbling upon some stony places, maybe a rock, a seed is trying to produce fruit. Well, there are some rocks. Why don't we allow the Lord to talk to us here? Maybe this current situation, this health crisis has unearthed some areas in your life where now you become hard because you don't like the circumstances. I mean, a lot of people are affected by what's transpiring now. And maybe it has you out of shape. There's some people right now that they've kind of stepped away from God and the things of God because Sometimes when tribulation and, and sometimes when temptation comes, when a period of testing comes, it's going to see where we are. Everything is fine when it's sunny, it's bright, when there's a storm. It kind of reveals where we are. When there's a testing, there's a temptation, there's a tribulation because of the Word's sake. Maybe God is sending some things right now. So we can remove some areas, some rocks, some places in our life. Come on, in Jesus' name. Come on, right where you are, maybe you're sitting down. Maybe you need to stand up right now. And maybe some of you, maybe you need to get on your knees. If the space allows you to. Maybe you're alone in your own house, and please respond to the Word of God. Don't just say, I listen to the message, and I listen to the church service. I punch my clock. We need to respond to the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is not limited to a building. Amen. You can sense and feel the presence of God right where you are. Come on, invite Him. Let him have his way. Come on, in I Jesus' just name. Wanna bless your name. Let us respond to it right now in Jesus' name. Maybe if you're right there with your family, you and just your family, y'all can pray for one another. Maybe you could join hands. I just wanna move it was fitting if you're in a, a group. Amen. Maybe you can pray appropriately. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I want the seed of God to be fed in my heart. I need the ground in my heart right. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Wherever you are, I pray that you will respond. You don't need to pray about anything in reference to anything in particular. Won't you just worship, lift your hands and worship him? Come on, let's bless him. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And for your good pleasure, so 
searching me, oh God.